Gwen zero. Okay, uh, Emma, are we recording? We're recording. You're good. Okay, Paul, can you confirm that we are recording? We are recording. I believe so. Yep. All right. Cool. I got two yeses. Let's do it. Welcome back to the St Sustainiacs. I can talk really well. Um, uh, it, it's Enso too, man. It's Enso too. Paul Whiteman is here, uh, and uh, Emma Whiteman is here. No relation, though, right, Emma? I don't think so. I mean, you, one could argue that I'm here seeing my family for the holidays, maybe a distant cousin or something. <laughs> not that I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get that a lot. There's a lot of Vincents around Chattanooga, this part of Tennessee. And so they always say, are you related to the, but I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, they wouldn't know that. I mean, it's a legitimate question, but I get that a lot. Apparently there's a lot of Vincents around here. But yeah, so it's so good we had to do it twice. And so plastics, right? Paul Whiteman is here. Uh, we're going to, this one is, this is dedicated to uh, Kevin Hand, uh, who had a lot of great questions. And um, we wanted to have Paul back on anyways to go through a whole bunch of stuff. And Paul, thank you so much for coming yeah. back on. What have you, quick, what have you been doing since last we talked to you? And then let's go through a quick elevator pitch of, of uh, and so again, just because I, I don't think everybody out there knows what you guys do yet. We're not going to stop. Still, they still do. The same, same thing. Still trying to save the planet, save the world, you know, help, <laughs> uh, help everybody out. Um, you know, we're, we're always talking about the plastic pollution issue. Uh, at ENSO, we are a, uh, an environmental technology company that uh, works with plastics to make sure that they work in our managed waste systems. So we provide the technology that just helps plastics work where they're being discarded and getting the highest return value from them. So that's what we do. Beautiful, beautiful. Emma, yeah. what have you been doing? What have you been doing lately? I haven't seen you in like a week, right? You were sick last I've week. Been so I've been so sick, and actually, I'm sorry if I if you hear me coughing, but I've been. I got. I went to Minnesota for a wedding. It was an outdoor Oops. wedding oh, in Minnesota. Oh. What? So it was about yeah, 32 degrees, which actually was warmer than I was expecting. So it was okay. Were they, fr were they from? Min so were they from? Were they She's from, from Minnesota? Minnesota? Yeah. So she was like, I want my outdoor wedding and I want snow around. And so everyone else okay. was like, okay, but they live in Florida now. So the whole family flew up from Florida Ooh. to Minnesota. Ooh, it's just crazy. You. But did, they get, did you have time snow? And then I was on the plane and I was like, uh Oh, I can't breathe. This isn't fun. Um, yeah. Like two COVID tests later and I don't have COVID. So I feel a lot better now. I'm ready to uh, dive into this conversation with Paul because I have been thinking about Enso since the last time we spoke and the mm. the interesting different like you guys have really challenged the way that I think about discarding plastic and right. I think it's really important to touch on and, and I'm so excited to have you back on the show. Good. It's gonna be great. Yeah. 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 We have some great questions from from Kevin Hand and, and, and other people as well. But I mean we'll mix them in with just talking about uh, maybe we can get through these uh with uh, from the perspective of Enso Plastic, could talk a little bit more about what you guys are doing there uh, at Enso. I have Paul admittedly tried to eat some plastic since the last time we talked, and I just can't do it. Can't do apparently, it. I, apparently, okay. I don't have the right. I don't have the right plastic. I need some of your magic <laughs> dust to put <laughs> to put on it. But uh, I have had some really great conversations with people that I have to hook you up with that that were really interested in what you guys are doing there and yes. and. Uh, what is going on? There's some really, really interesting things that are happening out there. But let's jump into these. Should we jump into these real quick? Yeah, sure. In all fairness, I did uh, send these to Paul ahead of time just to make sure I wasn't going to mm -hmm. stump him on here. Because if we can't answer these, we'll find somebody right. else who can. Because nobody knows everything about this. Right. But uh, Emma, I don't know if you know these either. But these are these are great questions. So apparently, there's a company, Sierra Energies, that claims that they are eliminating uh, the waste plastics going into landfills. I think it's more than just the plastics. It just says they eliminate waste. But I think it's specifically gasification of plastics they're turning it into a, like a sin gas or something like that is mm -hmm. is what they're doing paul do you know of this right. stuff right yeah i i'm not i'm not an expert on on the on the um emerging technologies that are happening out there there are a lot of things that are happening but you get you get a lot of the uh pyrolysis the sin gas talking about you know different ways of managing our waste um, it definitely comes out in the industry. I think that uh, when it comes to sustainability and managing our plastic waste, I think um, my personal view is that we're probably um, 
waiting on things like that and using those as sort of the uh, the the answer is you know well let's wait and see if this emerges right now. Um, but there there's a lot of amazing technical advancements that are going on in the industry all over the place, and I really don't have a you know specific horse in this race. When mm -hmm. we look at this, we just look at it at that 30,000 foot view and say, okay, what's happening right now? Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's a great way. That's a great way to look at it. I, uh, are you familiar with this, Emma? Cause I was not until I started looking this stuff up. I'm, I'm I have to admit it. I, as soon as he asked that question, I was like, okay, I got to look at this. Cause I know of pyrolysis, uh, mm -hmm. but, but the gasification and creating syngas, I was not familiar with and so so i, I I've never heard up. of it either that's why yeah. I like that's why it stuck in my head because i was like i can't believe you know all this yeah. is going on and, and i had no idea and it's a big thing like even people within the plastics industry the waste elimination industry the sustainability industry like they might not know about this so yeah yeah it's I, and i understand what you're, you're where you're coming from paul because there are a lot of there are a ton of different solutions that are uh you know nascent at best right at this particular time and will disrupt and will be perfected and they're not perfect yet right mm -hmm. and so it's hard to discuss those being in the space and trying to solve those issues and not sound like you're tearing down the competition or the perceived competition when in reality i know you i've talked to you we know what enso is about and you guys are one of the solutions moving forward a great right. one and it's going to take multiple different types of solutions yeah. when i look at this it kind of reminds me of electric uh vehicles right i write a lot of stuff about electric vehicles from the point of not tearing it down, but reminding people, hey, they're just not all that green yet. Let's not just right. sit back on our laurels and think these are guys are the saviors. Switzerland right. just ban banned them. Right. Okay, that's how green they aren't yet, right. but they will be right. And then you've got people. So you've got all these new reports on uh, massless batteries, right? Which aren't invisible batteries. It's just they're using uh, 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 carbon fibers and fiberglass, et cetera, to build structures. So the car frame, the truck frame would actually be the wow. battery, right? And they're, and they're making really good strides in them. Uh, and so the, you, we got to keep working on things is what I'm saying, right? And so this gasification, the only thing that upsets me a little bit about the gasification is how some of it is presented by certain companies because they say it's a green process. And it, the gasification, I guess, is, right? But it's the syngas when you burn it for power is not all that great yet. Is that a good way to put it? But they're moving forward, right? Yeah, and you're talking about a uh, you're talking about a uh, very energy intensive process. Whatever it is that they are doing is a very energy intensive process. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah, so the energy consumed well, to do this isn't all that green either, right? unless it's a green grid, right? right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like EVs, right. right? We're gonna need more chargers than parking spaces for trucks, right? And we don't even have we have like one parking space for every eleven trucks right now, for right. like the class eights. And but we're gonna need more than one charger for every truck that's out there in a, it right now. And right. we and the yeah, the carbon emissions just to build out that infrastructure right. is a disaster, right? <laughs> Yeah. It's like it's like hydrogen, right? So we were talking early in, in Nikola, right? And, and most people know about Nikola if you're in the space of right. hydrogen or or, or uh, alternate fuel and stuff like that. Trevor Milton and the whole spiel. But not going to get into that stuff. But you know they're in the final stages of getting like 1.3 billion dollars or something like that from uh, the DOA, I think it is, for uh, to build to to for a green hydrogen plant in Phoenix, which mm -hmm. is. It's not right. It's not a green hydrogen plant. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen burning hydrogen is green, but making it is incredibly mm -hmm. not green mm -hmm. right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of where we're at with the gasification as well, right? Yeah. They they all come down to they all come down to LCAs. And if you Ooh, if you, what's an LCA? Your life cycle assessment. Okay. So you're, you're looking at that life cycle assessment, and you know you're. From my perspective, and you know, I, I I stand on one side of this argument, but uh, on my perspective, when you look at an LCA, there's no question about that. There's going to be a huge environmental impact from syngas or whatever they're doing versus what you're seeing in a landfill. A positive yeah. impact. 
No. Oh. Negative impact versus a landfill. A huge environmental impact negatively versus a landfill. Wow. So, okay. You know when you're when you're talking about you know things like syngas can't really compete is to, on to with landfills as far as energy efficiency. Landfills do it much better, and this is you know this is always that that discussion that I get into. And this is why I say I really don't have a horse in the race on this because it's a matter of we're talking about you know or, the one thing we're all on the same page about. I think to to get this from 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 start from the beginning. I think one of the good things about this is that recycling. When you talk about recycling, when we're talking about plastic pollution and everything. When you're talking about recycling. Energy recovery should be a part of that equation. Yeah. Energy recovery should be a part of the recycling equation. Well, and I think I think what a lot of people like just based on the feedback that I've gotten and, and you know, I see you posting on LinkedIn and responding to comments. And I think what a lot of people are missing is that you're not necessarily trying to replace recycling. You're not necessarily right. trying to send more plastics to the landfill, but you have the realism of okay, I know that eventually these plastics will end up there or historically a lot of these plastics have ended up there or these can't be recycled for this reason. So we might as well milk everything we can out of it at the end. And people aren't like, when when people are thinking of a life cycle of the plastic, they're not considering the life after the landfill or in the landfill or after the landfill. They're only right. thinking about, well, it goes to the landfill and that's bad. They're not considering also the life cycle of, all right, well, this is, you know, it's still in the landfill, so it's still right. alive, so it still needs to be considered, which I think is is pretty major that people aren't realizing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you aren't trying to replace recycling necessarily. No, I, you, it's, you know, in, in fact, probably you know just the opposite. We need we need to do a better job at recycling. We need to oh yeah, we need to really see if we can recycle PET the way it should be recycled. Can we get to that echelon of, of, of recycling more than 50% of PET? Can we get to that? Uh, we're not even close to that right now. No, but, no, can we get to it? but instead what's happening is you've got companies all over the place, um, you know, directors of sustainability in some of these companies that I'd love to pick a bone with, but you know, they're going to tell you that all their applications are recyclable. Now that's just not, that's not true. And what's happening is that, we're sending everything to the recycling facilities and contaminating the hell out of the recycling industry. Which cycle? Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. And, it, well, it's just, we should it's be pulling the, back from those applications and just sending the things that are that need that can go in that recycling facility that do do have viability in that uh, right. recycling and work with those. The other things we need to ensure the highest return value using the infrastructures that we have in place. And that's literally the definition of circularity when that whole concept came out was ensuring yeah. that highest return value in the infrastructures we have available today. And right now we're collecting about 90% of plastic waste in a highly managed, strictly regulated facility that is producing renewable energy. So we go back to the syngas and then I ask, okay, then what are you trying to solve? Yeah, because yeah, right. I, yeah, is the syngas just I've a to waste management? I've listened to CEOs of waste management. And they'll tell you they have researched everything you can do out there as far as waste management. If there was something better than anaerobically managing their solid waste, they'd probably be moving to it. Yeah. I, so I mean, is I, it a, is it a factors? Yeah. So it sounds to me like it's a. Um, well, I mean, I, I I don't know. Maybe they can perfect something there and get a better way of extracting the energy. But it sounds like it's something they're trying to do, improve out and gaining market share and trying to keep it going and keep the revenues flowing into it to keep the runway there so they can uh, find something. And maybe that's not the best way yeah. to get it done. And I mean, I, I think it's a great example to talk about where some of the dangers lie as we move forward towards, you know, zero emissions 2050 and zero plastics and all other kind of stuff is we've got oh. to fail. We've got to try everything we possibly can. And that means failing, but we need to fail fast and about face to move somewhere else if it doesn't work. Right. Yes, if we but... a perfect system, we're never going to make any progress. I mean, and right. 
this system is cashing in on infrastructure that's already in place. We don't need to wait for infrastructure. We don't yeah. need to go through some sort of industri second industrial revolution where we come up with all this. Like, It's actually cashing in on the infrastructure we have. It's preventing the creation of let's say a new landfill or a new mm -hmm. charging station that's going to take resources. I mean, when you actually sit down and think about it, that's when, I, but I think, I think people are failing to understand that, you know, we've been taught for so long, recycle, 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 and, recycle, no and, plastic, and, and, zero and, landfill, and, zero landfill. And it's not, it's not realistic. Right. right. Land, landfills are bad. We've been taught for decades. Oh my God. Landfills, landfills are bad. They'll, 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 in every article you see out there when it comes to plastic pollution, they will, you know, blah, blah, blah in the article. And then somewhere in the article, they say, and we're sending all of our plastics to a landfill. Ah, well, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. You guys did that, you know, 50 years ago about our landfills, but there's a lot of innovation that has happened on how we're managing our solid waste. There's a lot of innovation that's going on in anaerobically managed solid waste systems. And when you uncover that, you see how much return value is coming from those facilities. So then, and I see them again, you turn back to the syngas, hey, if, 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 if every week a truck wants to come to my house and pick up all my plastic trash and take it to a syngas facility because that's what's environmentally better and, and, and providing more value than taking it to a landfill, I don't care. That's mm. fine. But right now, I'm telling you, everybody that's in this race is saying, hey, the, that landfill gas energy is way better than trying to do whatever else it is that you're t telling me about. But yeah. you know, if at some point that that changes, that's fine. And I, and I, I wrote this down because I was thinking about with this, when BP just invested $4 billion into landfill gas energy. Wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. When they just did that, they said, Thanks to federal subsidies, sucking methane out of a landfill is twice as profitable per unit of energy versus pumping oil with zero carbon emissions. Wow. And they dropped $4 billion on landfill gas energy projects. So it's kind of one of those wow. things where if I'm in sustainable packaging and I'm looking at this plastic application and I'm going, how do I find the highest return value and eliminate this application as a pollutant? It kind of comes down to common sense. Well, then let's yeah. make it work in the landfill. If syngas becomes a thing, and for some reason we change our waste infrastructure and we turn to syngas, great. I'm out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, so let me. So let me ask, ask you this: Is it? Is it a? Can we? paint a broad stroke across this and just say, hey, we need to be recycling plastics as much as we can and reusing it, reusing it, right? And and if not, then landfills are actually getting better and better and better. And hopefully that will proliferate around the globe, right? Because I know there's places where they're not managed as well as what you're, what you're saying they are here and what they certainly are here. In many countries, probably, yes. But I know they're not everywhere, right? I, I mean, there are still some pretty nasty landfills about and some of them being decommissioned and such so when we look at these things like uh some of the other questions let's let's go let's do some other questions we beat this one to hell the uh so it's like so interesting. <laughs> well it is it really is but the guy's got some other ones here and know, and, and, they're, and they're they're just as interesting like converting plastics into fertilizers right or converting it into hydrogen or fuel you know for fuel cells I, it sounds to me like we're going to spend a heck of a lot of energy to turn plastics into hydrogen, right? It can't be cleaner than just creating electrolysis or doing it through electrolysis, is it? And and, and I will go back to I'll go back to our original uh, podcast, the conversation we we're having, where I will look at any of those any of those things. You take you take that you take to talk about hydrogen or something like that of that nature. And I will say, I will, I will weigh that against three things, scale, practice, and the return value. Anything out there, I will ask scale, practice, and return value. 
Does it have those three things? If they're doing hydrogen in South Korea. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. I, that's, I, I can tell you that's not where my plastic waste is going. Right. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, you know, um, but, but I don't discourage any advancements out there on, on you know, you know, trying to keep pushing the limits and doing everything. But I always come back to, you know, we've got a plastic pollution problem. And it's yeah. because plastics do not inherently work in our solid waste systems, in our managed waste systems. We have to unplug the drain. We have to make sure that the plastics are working in our managed waste systems. And that managed waste systems is our solid waste systems. And instead of demonizing it, look at the diamonds that are in your backyard and go, oh my God, landfill gas energy is all, all over the place. Amazon just signed a big deal for renewable natural gas. So funny yeah. that I, I don't understand why it's not more common. Like, I don't understand why doesn't everybody know about this. Well, because I have been, I've been in this industry for 11 years, Emma. And I it, and the reason I am in this for that long is because this is such an enigma to me. Because when I first got into this, I heard this story and this concept. And I'm not a technical guy. And I'm not necessarily the biggest environmentalist. But when I heard this story, it was like, well, this makes sense. Makes sense. This is a huge issue, and this makes sense. Right. And I can see the truck coming to pick up my stuff that's running on landfill gas, and I see it happening, and I see all the articles, and it's like, okay, everybody must want to make sure their plastics work in a landfill. And then when you go to sustainability people, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to talk about landfills. We don't want our waste going to landfills. It's like, okay, well, it is. It's like we need to un undemonize the landfills. We need right. to we need to get yeah. waste management a better marketing team that can come up. Here's the thing, though. Why are you me saying something else? The plastics that are in there, the plastics that are being put in there, need to be producing these greenhouse gases, right. or need to be producing these the renewable natural gas, well, right? And right now they don't. This is where ENSO right. comes. I mean, they break down, but it's hundreds of years. It might not be right. thousands of years, but it's hundreds right. of years. Plastics yeah. are not producing RNG out of these landfills. And that's their argument. But right. your solution helps them do that or right. let's, allows them to do that, I guess. I mean, we talked about that. We're not teaching or creating microbes that eat plastic. That's no. dangerous. We're no. teaching <laughs> that's that's where we become pods and all kinds of weird stuff and zombie <laughs> apocalypse apps. But Right. So, that, I mean, that's that's the thing, right? You're, I mean, I just want to be clear because it, it, it sounded there for a minute like we were arguing that, hey, just throw your plastics away. It's, everything's great. That's not necessarily true, right? It, we're going to generate waste. Yes. That, that potato chip bag has done an amazing job preserving those potato chips for years on the shelf. Mm -hmm. They taste just like the day they were made because of that bag. Yeah. Once you have eaten those chips, that bag is going to be discarded. It has done its job. Somebody in sustainability needs to ensure the highest return value now, because now I'm going to stick it in a solid waste system. And there are technologies and testing data to ensure that highest return value. That's common sense. That should be sustainability 101. Amen, you're right, I agree. Agree a hundred percent. It's getting there and building that infrastructure to make that happen. You, you know what I'm saying? So if we, if we stick on the recycling side of it and, and we're not in that perfect world where everybody's got um, the Enso products, which is what, what is it again that you, the, the 1% you put in? It, it's restore. And so restore. restore. And so restore that, that mm -hmm. basically allows it to uh, um, be consumed in a landfill. Right. 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 So no, that's not that's not through all the plastics right now. So we're creating we need to be right. recycling anyways. And, and until the and, and then when at the end of life, your products would, would work. Right. Because you could keep recycling plastics even with the Enso Restore in the right. mixture of that plastic. Right. It, it won't right. kill the reusable. OK, so that infrastructure. We're trying to put it through an infrastructure that was built only linearly to make plastic, right? The, the, the infrastructure to make virgin plastic is there. To redo it, the infrastructure is not there. You've got, like you said, by the time all the plastic gets together, it's a single stream system that we've that we've made. So you've got 
all seven types, and there's, I mean, there's way more than seven types, but seven types of plastics, the RIC codes, if you will, mm -hmm. that go into this and they contaminate each other. If we separate those sooner or a more efficient way to separate those and get those single streams, will that not help solve part of that problem? I mean, or, it, it, could, it could, I mean, re recycling for aluminum, recycling for paper, recycling is great. Mm -hmm. Recycling for plastic, it's okay. Yeah, I agree. It's okay. It's not, it's not, it's not going to do the job. You hear it all the time. We're not going to recycle our way out of this. And since, until we start changing that conversation from, oh, but we've got to recycle everything first. You know, the fact is, is that recycling is not going to save us. It is not going to save us from, 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 you know, plastic pollution or, or making plastics or anything like that. It's, we've got to elevate this conversation past the mecha mechanical aspect of recycling. That's why I say if energy recovery is part of recycling and energy recovery is, is more part of recycling in Europe than it is in the United States. But if it was part of that whole conversation that if I can't recycle it into another plastic application, I'm recycling it into renewable energy, this whole conversation changes. We, we can absolutely get a handle on this. And again, it's, I always come from this, from the aspect that it's not just about ENSO, we've got the technologies are out there. We've got the testing, uh, testing to make sure that our plastics are working in our waste systems. You, you, you look at some of these sustainability programs and you're like, are, are you kidding me? I mean, when you look at somebody like, like a Nestle or Pepsi or Coke, and yeah, I'd love to ask one of their sustainability people, can you not account for one single application that's going into our managed waste systems? It does feel like a no brainer. Like, even if, even if we lived in a perfect society where 100 or 99% of plastic was properly recycled, which mm -hmm. we don't, it's very obvious. Even if we, even if we lived in that society, it's also like, it doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't just cover all your bases and include the additive. Like, it almost feels like, you know, there's people that aren't going to recycle. There's stuff that will be recycled to death and then will end up in the landfill. It, it almost seems like a no brainer to include some right. sort of additive that will give you these returns that you're looking for. I mean, a lot of people might see plastic single use especially plastics as a, a loss of investment i mean you you use it once you get such a low return on investment for it mm -hmm. so it almost seems like putting the additive in is a no-brainer that that more yeah. people don't take yeah. it a couple things one you get you get there one it, it's actually measurable so you actually get at investment back in sustainability. You're reducing your greenhouse gas emissions. You're lowering your carbon footprint. You're making sure there's renewable energy recovery. So there's a value there for, for a, a brand or a producer to make sure it works in there. And, and one of the other things I, I want to touch on also when it comes to syngas and stuff is that when you're talking about the life cycle, those landfills that plastics are going to biodegrade, you know, hundreds of years after that, that landfill has been closed. It's no longer mm -hmm. working. We're making sure that plastics are working in that time frame where they're managing those gases. Mm -hmm. And that's about so, that's between two to fifty years. But what happens after that? Which is this is important because what happens after that, the two to you know fifty years or seventy five years, however long they're they're managing those landfills, those landfills now are becoming solar farms. They're becoming parks. They're becoming environmental sanctuaries. They're doing all kinds of things with landfills after the life of those landfills that are way better than what you're going to get with a syngas facility. So in one generation, those landfills are going to be shutting down and they're going to use those landfills as other things. Like I said, you know, they're using them as solar farms and stuff like that, golf courses. So... <clears throat> You know, there is an afterlife to those landfills that are happening. And again, like you said, Emma, we have to really just kind of stop demonizing where we're putting our plastic waste, where we're collecting 90% of our plastic waste. There's nothing that has that kind of capture rate. 
90%. Can you imagine if we were recycling 90% of plastics? It'd be I mean, tremendous. It would be crazy. It would be nuts. I think the, the biggest the biggest takeaway, and I guess I I don't think that any of us are trying to say just throw your plastic in the in the landfill. I, but I think until we get our recycling systems up to par, it doesn't make sense to not cash in on the returns that you can get by sending plastics to the landfill right here, right now at this time currently, you know, like, Agreed. yeah. Yes, if you're going what to, is- if you're going to wrap my paper towels in a thin little plastic wrap, my paper towels, and I've got to take that, take that, that wrap off and throw it in the garbage, then somebody in sustainability should be taking accountability for what's happening as a consumer. Okay. Agreed, a hundred percent. What what are the so what are the when if it were treated with the restore product and it goes into into the into the landfill as it's being consumed, I guess is what it is. Mm-hmm. is it, as it's decomposing, whatever you want to call it, it does it does it um what it, what is it giving off? What are the gases that it's giving off? Uh, it's giving off the the three elements that that any carbon based uh, material is giving off. So you're talking about gas humus, so soil, and water. So those three things, and those gases are then either, you know, um, managed or converted. So you're either lowering those, green, lowering those greenhouse gases or lowering those greenhouse gases and converting them into renewable energy. And gotcha. again, that, you know. Is it, is it carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, the gases, or? It's carbon dioxide and methane. Hmm. So, and then in, in a compost, you're not getting that methane, but in the anaerobic, uh, anaerobically managed systems, you're getting that methane. But and by the way, and by the and, way, if, if we're going to use the RNG to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, power our vehicles, right. we need more plastics being put into there because there's right now there's not enough methane being produced from these things to isn't, isn't handle all the vehicles right i mean we need more right. more methane we need it's more rng the benefits of methane as right. a gas is how potent it is like and that's bad for the greenhouse gas effect but and correct me if i'm wrong but that's actually good for like it's, no the energy power. density yeah the yeah. energy density is very good yeah yeah, so yeah, yeah. honestly, it's not even a bad thing to say that methane is produced. I feel like that's, right. you know, that no, it's good as long as you're going to capture it and burn. If you're going to capture it and utilize it, you're then gonna it's capture great. It, I mean, you want more of it being produced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like Emma said earlier, you're also, you know, you're also taking accountability on how those how those landfills are being managed and mm-hmm. that landfill airspace that you know you're they're, they're not storage facilities. We should not be using the landfills as storage facilities for plastics. But if you make sure those plastics work in those environments and you're reducing that landfill airspace to, uh, you know, elongate that life st- lifespan of that, that landfill, that's good for everybody. Right. Yeah, it's it becomes a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a fuel generation facility. Yeah. It's not a landfill, right? It's the way we got to exactly. think about it. Gotcha. Exactly. Interesting. So, gotcha. I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to go on to a really cool subject on his last, uh, number mm-hmm. six, if you guys are ready for that, or if you if you've got something else, okay, cool. This this one is interesting because um, we just talked to somebody who's. Um, I just talked to a, a gentleman, uh, uh, um, Luke Haverhalls, who's with uh, Natural Fiber Welding, and so this is kind of question is is around there is is using the uh, basically sugars uh, mm-hmm. to ke- for chemistry to create um, materials right? Instead of, mm-hmm. instead of plastics. And that's kind of, that's what they're doing at NFW, which is in Peoria, Illinois. It's natural fiber welding. I don't know if you've heard of them mm-hmm. or not, Paul, but they're really interesting. You should look them up. Um, he is a chemist from, uh, uh, got his PhD at Iowa, University of Iowa. He's a Hawkeye. Um, and looked to what he calls the original, he's right, the original circular economy, which is nature. And, uh, they create materials out of a, a blend of different natural fibers, et cetera, that then can just be chopped up and basically thrown back away and they become dirt instead of using plastics at all. Have you heard of this? you have thoughts on this? Is this- um, I mean, I certainly have heard of, you know, sugar cane and things of that nature being used. Um, I guess that kind of gets thrown into the bioplastics 
bunch. Yeah, kind know, of. I, kind yeah, of out there. With, with that, I don't know if there's something specific about you know the sugar they're using or anything, but again, I, I, from there, there's all kinds of different things, but a lot of times what they're doing is just they're still creating a, a, a polyethylene. They're still creating that polymer, whether you know it's from recently living plants, which would be our fossil fuels, or or I'm sorry, from fossilized plants or recently living plants we're still creating the same thing. So we have to, so it, we have is, to be is careful this, where we're sourcing this material from because we use a lot of it. Yeah. And, and when you go into something like sugar or anything agricultural, then that whole conversation changes. Yeah. The, well, the argument is that is that the, 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 the and, and you have to get into, you're right, you have to get into what you're specifically harvesting for the right. process, right? Because the argument is that there is more um, uh, biomass produced than we could possibly consume, right? A every day. It, but it's the types that are being produced mm -hmm. that you would need to actually have those those figures. Is that the difference between really what they call biomass and what fossil fuels is just the recent life of that plant <laughs> i mean, I mean when you're talking about when you're talking about petroleum you're talking about you're talking about fossilized algae you're talking about plants yeah. that have just you know fossilized algae so you know it's either we we get it from the fossilized algae or we cut down plants that are that were just living and then we just you know mow through those and now we're making so you gotta you have to be very careful on that aspect of it again don't have a horse in the game yeah, even yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if even if you're you think that it's it's better to make your your product out of sugar cane, I'm still going to ask you the same question: Does that application work in the managed waste system that a consumer is going to throw that application into to avoid that's, the yeah. So that's that's I guess a good question that I just I just thought of because it's made of like a newer bio something. Right. Does it have any effect on like the longevity of that specific product? Like if you were to, so, so one thing I was reading about a while ago was like a, a seaweed water bottle that they were giving to runners like during marathons. And it was like yeah. a ball yeah. of, and you could just like pop it in your mouth and it would biodegrade, but then yeah. they were, they couldn't like ship it and they couldn't, it wouldn't last long enough to actually give to the runners. <laughs> like, does they, they, they dug their hand? They dug their hand in it and then broke like fifty of the balls. Right. The yeah. balls like so. So I guess my question would be: If you were to use the the Enso product in these biodiverse plastics, would it affect the longevity that we need in plastics or not? Yeah. I mean, that, that, again, that depends on what you're making out of. If you're right. making it yeah. out of like something like a sugar cane, where you're just basically you're still you're making that long polymer chain and it's not going to break down, then yes, using our additive would work. If you're making something that just kind of disintegrates in the water, yeah. no, our additive is not going to do anything. Like, like a water bottom of seaweed? You know, no, we we can't have to maintain that structural aspect of plastics in so many ways. I mean, there's the, 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 what the properties that plastics give us. When we change that to something and start using something else, that changes and that changes everything in the supply chain. You got to be very careful not to affect that supply chain. That yeah. product mm -hmm. has to last. That there has to be that 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 aspect of plastics that, you know, I'm a big advocate for standard plastics because they work. But, you know, again, it's a matter of making sure that they work also in our managed waste systems. But if something comes up that's, you know, Sugar cane or corn, you know, I'm not even not corn. I, I, I've seen, you know, we work with um, algae, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 years from now, we may be harvesting algae and making plastics out of algae, but that's not what we're doing right now. Sure. Right. Anybody in sustainability, and, and I challenge anybody in sustainability, that's not what we're doing now. And what are you doing to take accountability of the life cycle of that application? And most of them out there say, I, we're doing nothing. We're just telling you it can be recycled. And that's a, that's just a bold-faced lie. Yeah, so, I love it.
I love it. Paul, I, I love your very matter of fact and not get caught up in the rainbow butterflies and the arguments of, of what's going on here. I think, uh, I think we've, we've beat up uh, or at least discussed <laughs> Kevin, Kevin's stuff uh, pretty good. I mean, the rest of them are really similar to number one is, is can you convert it into fertilizer? Can you convert it into carbon? Can you convert it? And again, it comes down to, and I would like you, we're, 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 we're at the end here again of number two, we're going to have to do number three here in a little bit, but um, uh, how, give us the litmus test one more time. You've got, you there's three items that you go through, and then there's this one question that you keep asking every time. Scale, Give that to us one more time. Yeah, does it have scale? Whatever you're talking about it, does it have scale, practice, and return value? And where are consumers properly discarding your application when they're done with that? Where is it going? You can answer that. It's okay. You can say, you know, when we're done with it, you know, this little – little foil bag, the, the K cups, things of those nature, that's going to a landfill. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get away from the greenwashing and all the BS that's going on, use the facts, data, and the science to justify what you're doing in sustainability. And all that is, is taking accountability for the primary managed waste system where plastics are being discarded. That's how you eliminate pollution. That's how, you know, we, we lower our greenhouse gas emissions, reduce our carbon footprint, and make sure they're the highest return value at the end of that life cycle. That's all we can do. And making sure plastics are working in our waste systems. Yeah. Awesome. awesome I mean, you can stuff. be as green as you want, but you're not going to escape plastic. Because even I'm sitting here thinking, well, okay, well, your K-cup example, for instance, well, I don't use K cups because I'm so green that I get my I get my <laughs> beans whole and then I grind them myself. I'm like still thinking. I'm like, okay, well, how do my beans come? They come in plastic. How was my grinder packaged when I got it? It came in plastic. I bet your grinder's made plastic out of plastic. Ninety percent of it. <laughs> bag in the box. No, like ninety percent. If I'm a K cup person and I'm a K cup person, Nestle. So there's a sustainability person at Nestle. Do you not know me as a consumer? I'm using a K-cup. How environmental do you think I am? Do you think that after I use this K-cup, I'm going to take this K-cup and stick it in an industrial compost? Right. No, I'm not. I'm going to send it to a landfill. Right. What are you doing about that? Right. And their answer is nothing. We don't want anything going to a landfill. And that's just that's just dumb. Right. I agree. I mean, that's just yeah, no, it, no, it makes, it makes no got, sense. We've got, a, we've got a plastic pollution problem. We don't have a recycling problem. We have a plastic pollution problem. I agree. And plastics need to work in our managed waste systems. And that is just sustainability 101 common sense. I love it. And we're gonna we're gonna give that that's the last word on the subject today, my friend. And I and I love it. Very passionate, heartfelt. <laughs> and uh and, and, and I love it. Paul, where are people going to learn about Enso and you and discuss these things with you? I mean, they came to us and yeah. send questions to uh, the, uh, what are, where are we at? The sustainiacs at gmail.com, right? Come yeah. and look me up on LinkedIn. I'm Michael Vincent. I'm also the sustainiacs on LinkedIn and Vincent the Dude on Twitter and sustainiacs on everything else. She's Emma underscore sustainiac, right? And you, yep. Uh, and you can reach me any of those places, LinkedIn, Emma Whiteman as well. And, you know, if you don't, if you're intimidated by sending an email, <laughs> you can send me your questions over uh, Instagram and we can maybe get Paul yeah. again and, and chat more about it. Yeah, put them in comments on the YouTube okay. channel because this goes out on the podcast uh, and on the YouTube so you can see Paul's beautiful face yeah. and his passion. And see the spittle coming out of his mouth as he's telling you. <laughs> oh, no. it What's that happening? <laughs> no, I, us Whitemans are very passionate people, okay? Yeah, yeah. And well, the Whitemans are very passionate. <laughs> uh, but, Paul, but Paul, seriously, uh, where do they go to Enso Plastics to learn about uh, more about what you guys are so doing? Enso Plastics about. to learn about us. Uh, sales at EnsoPlastics.com. Send us an email. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Paul Whiteman on, on LinkedIn. So, you know, I'm out there having that, that conversation, happy to have the conversation. You know, we're all we're all just trying to solve a problem. And, uh, you know, that's that's what we're in this for. And we kind of need to get off our asses and start solving problems. Great. Yep. Amen. 
right on. Yeah. This is Sustainiacs. Peace and love, everybody.